spotting the clinical signs of Cushing's is as easy as 1, 2, P. Many of the symptoms of Cushing's disease can be linked to the letter P. Up to 90% of dogs with Cushing's disease display polydipsia and polyuria. As a result, urine-specific gravity will also be low. Although increased thirst and urination are easily recognisable to you as a vet, owners may notice it as changes in behaviour. Directing open questions towards behavioural changes may provide you with more information. In addition, dogs with Cushing's disease are more prone to frequent urinary tract infections. If you have a patient who suffers from recurrent UTIs, could Cushing's be the cause? Another sign of Cushing's disease is polyphagia. Similarly to PUPD, owners may not see this as an immediate issue. Again, it is useful to talk about behaviours which suggest an increased appetite. Dogs with Cushing's disease can also develop a pot-bellied appearance. This may be caused by hepatomegaly, increased bladder size, fat redistribution and abdominal muscle weakness. As physical changes often occur slowly over time, reviewing older photos of your patients can make chronic changes more apparent. Muscle weakness affects more than just the abdomen. It contributes to panting and poor exercise tolerance. Owners may complain that their dog struggles to rise or jump up. Alopecia may be a concern for Cushingoid dog owners. Paper-thin skin and hyperpigmentation may also occur. Dogs with Cushing's disease are more prone to recurrent pyoderma. If you have a patient who suffers from recurrent skin infections, you should consider Cushing's disease. As dogs are often diagnosed at the early stages of the disease, they may not display all the P signs together. Any combination of symptoms could indicate Cushing's disease. In summary, the common clinical signs of Cushing's disease are polydipsia, polyuria, polyphagia, potbelly, poor exercise tolerance, panting, and alopecia. Think Cushing's disease. Think pee.